This is BMK, where we inspire others to be more knowledgeable, be more kind, and be more in the know. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. This week's guest, I'm so excited to have. He's a man of many talents, educated, artistic. Introduce yourself to my viewers, please. Uh, my name is Otis Eldridge, AKA Vito Cash. Um, I'm a school teacher, I teach music, I uh, play saxophone, um, I produce music, I rap, uh, try to be active in the community and like, you know, just be a good person. Okay, philanthropist. No. Uh, so as far as music, you said you produce music. How did you get into that? Uh, that was actually something that me and a friend of mine, you know, uh, John said we all went to middle school together. Uh, we actually kind of started delving into that in, in high school when we were all 14 or 15 years old, uh, making beats on a keyboard called an X3. And then uh, my homeboy, first dude I ever knew that had a computer, I downloaded this program called Fruity Loops. And then I just kind of <laughs> started making beats on there and just trying out different stuff and just kept progressing with it over the years. Went to college, started meeting different people and learning different techniques, trying different programs and uh, eventually got on Reason and NPC and just trying all of these different things. Like, you know, I've never been a guy who was scared to try to learn something new. So that's how I got into it, honestly, just trying to have fun. So do you, would you say that you like producing more than you like rapping? Uh, I would say producing comes to me more naturally. Rapping is something like, it serves a different part of my personality. Like, you know, I get to like be uh, braggadocious, like, cause you know, as a producer, you're kind of supposed to be behind the camera. You're like in the back, like really people ain't really supposed to know who you are, but as a rapper, you kind of get to step out and show people like, yeah, this is my, my swag, my attitude, my personality. So I can, they, they serve different purposes for me, but producing just comes more naturally. Rapping, I kind of got over time and after I realized that I was kind of like a very assertive kind of dude. And I felt like, can I curse? Yeah. Okay. I felt like niggas were not rapping about shit. So I was like, you know, it just made me want to try it more. But at first, I was scared to do it because I didn't want to be whack. <laughs> <laughs> this you know is true. Um, do you think you bring any of those qualities and skills into your learning? Into your education? The education portions of yourself? So like in with school, with teaching? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, being a rapper... It's like, you cannot be afraid. You cannot be like, uh, what's the word I want to use? You can't like be afraid to assert yourself, to like really command a room. And Confident. Being, yeah, and being a teacher is the same thing. Like being a teacher is performance. Uh, that's why some teachers aren't very good because they don't understand that aspect of it. When you step in front of a group of children, you're on stage. Like they're looking for you to entertain them. And not necessarily in like a performative way, like you getting up there, like like acting like Barney or something. Unless you're dealing with like little kids, you yeah. literally gotta like be like Barney. But <laughs> you know, like you you have to be able to captivate people's attention. You have to be entertaining. You have to be somebody that folks will want to listen to. We've all sat in classes with people that were just born and like, oh God, I, just shut up. So you never want to be that person. So being a rapper kind of like gives you the tools to do that, but with education. That's the best way I can say it. Okay, so what subject do you teach? I teach music, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I wouldn't teach anything else. Um, I mean, I know, I but my, my viewers need to know what inspired you to, you to pick music as your subject of choice to teach. Oh, man. <laughs> Me and the host, we went to uh, middle school together, right? So at Booker T, they had this program called the Arts Academy. And I owe so much to that program because that's what really gave me my start in music. Yes, so in sixth grade, uh, I got a chance to join a band. And really the only reason I joined the band was because my sister was in the band. And she played the flute. I thought she was good, but come to find out, she kind of sucked. <laughs> so I joined the band playing drums, and you know all little boys want to play drums, they want to be cool. But uh, the drums got kind of boring for me, just being honest, but that was just because of, it was just 
very simple the way that we started. So I told my band director I wanted to play the clarinet. And he kind of knew my personality. He was like, you're not a clarinet player. Like, so he put me on a, a saxophone. And you know, saxophone ended up being my thing. So when I was in the sixth grade, that's when I started playing the sax. Played sax all through middle school band, with the high school band, played in high school band. That ended up helping me get a scholarship in college. So by the time I got to college, you know, I never been a guy who was untalented, not to be on the cocky or like, you know, whatever. I just never been a guy who was so uh, I had to choose a major and music was the th only thing I had spent a whole lot of time doing. So I was like, well, I guess I'll be a music major. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it at that moment. Like I didn't know if I wanted to be a performer. I didn't know if I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't know if I wanted to be an instrument repairman. I just knew that I was interested in music and I loved doing it. So I decided to get my bachelor's in music. And then uh, after I finished my bachelor's, I was like, well, what am I going to do now? And it was a very interesting time in the world because like, it was like a, um, like a global like economic downturn, like shutdown. Like it was like 2008, 2009 for real. So oh, okay. it was a time where a lot of people were graduating college and they couldn't find jobs. So I was like, I don't really want to go into that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get my master's degree. So I decided to get my master's in education. Cause I was like, if I'm a, if I'm a work in music, I don't want to be like a dude who's like, uh, depending on playing my saxophone to make money. Because I look at that like prostitution or like shaking your ass. Like, you know, that's the way I, that's the way I view it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know that some people, they got different uh, perspectives on that, but I just didn't want to be one of those people who had to play at a church or had to play at a club in order to make money. I wanted to have a career where I could like have health benefits and have like a pension. And like, I was really thinking long term with it. So I was like, well, what do I want to do? And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be a starving artist, as they say. Like, you know, a lot of people, they want to be musicians, but they don't really have a plan for how they're going to live life. I wanted to be a homeowner. I wanted to have property. I wanted to, you know, be stable. I didn't want to, like, and sadly, we look at what just happened with the pandemic. A lot of people I know weren't able to make money because there was no show. There was no club. There was no church. You couldn't go to church and make your money. So I, I was lucky at that time that I had a career that I could still work in music and, you know, pay my bills. Well, that was a long answer. But, yeah. No, no, that was pretty cool. It wasn't as long as you thought. Um, detail, but right, it was to the point. It, it was it, it was needed, I'm gonna say that. Um, so your students, are they younger students, college kids? Uh, right, I've taught college before, but currently I'm teaching in K through, pre-K through eight. So they were around four, to 13, 14. <laughs> okay, so with that, are, are any of them, uh, how would I put this? Are they showing you signs of being good? Like, you know how when a kid has a talent and you can like almost instantly see it, mm -hmm. do you have those kids that are that passionate about music? Oh, for sure, man. One of the things I really, really love working with Work, about working with children is that they have so much talent and so much passion like they haven't been tainted yet I mean some of them they've been through real real tough things in life and you know they had things that are out of their control but children like the, you get constantly reminded of the potential and the greatness that can be by working with children so I have children that just show me like look um, today a little boy he's a fifth grader learning to play trumpet he just started like two months ago like no cap this dude came up to me and played when the saints go marching in and he taught it to himself like i just taught him how to play you know he's learning the notes he's learning the scales learning the basics he's like yeah mr e uh i learned this over the weekend straight up played it for me like i'll show you the video when we leave like i was so excited because it's just like wow this dude is 10 years old and I can just see so much potential mm -hmm. in where you could go. Like, yo, you just taught yourself a song mm -hmm. on a trumpet that you've been playing for two months. Anything is possible. Dedication. Like, and these kids, they just, you just see it every day. So I feel like it kind of keeps you young. It kind of keeps you engaged. I can never get but so jaded with the world because I understand that, um, you know, these children, they, they got great in them. Yeah. Okay. So as far as like being a rapper, uh, V Cash, that's your rap name. 
Veto cash. Veto cash. Yeah. And what, where, where, where did that come from? Uh, honestly, at first, like, you know, it was just something that I thought sounded cool. Like, you know, obviously, I'm motivated by money. I like making money. But uh, you ever seen The Godfather? Oh, yes. So uh, Vito Angelini was The Godfather. So, yeah. you know, that's a movie that, uh, you know, most rappers are influenced by mobs type shit. So it just was something that influenced me. And I like the way he carried himself. He was a gangster, but he had principles. And, you know, he wasn't just about anything. So, obviously, that was something that really, really in, uh, influenced me and inspired me. And then, you know, I'm a deep person, so I started trying to, like, come up with literature to kind of support why, like, this name made sense for me. Okay. So, I actually came up with an acronym, which is Vehemently Intelligent, Totally Organized, Chasing a Supreme Hustle. So, that was, like, okay. something I did. Then I started thinking, like, the word veto is, like, uh, is like a, um, a synonym or, like, the meaning of it in Italian is life. Like like vital signs. Okay. It's like so, it's like it just was so many things about it that reinforced like yeah, this is this is something that I can call myself. So, that definitely resonates for you. You feel me? So it does. you know, most people don't know it goes that deep. Like you know, they just think that it's just a name that I chose. But when I really like started like putting it together, I was like, yeah, this is the one. So what what kind of rapper would you consider yourself? Uh. At one point, I would say I was like a conscious rapper, like most of Talib Kweli, you know, because I really, uh, I want to make music that people can feel. I don't want to just make music about like drugs and shooting niggas and, and hoes and all that, because that's not really my life. I can't, I can't get on the record and say that. Like, I'm not going to hate on nobody for what they do. But at the end of the day, I'm a man where it's like, I got to be able to stand behind what I'm doing. I got to be able to let my mom hear this record. I can't let my mom hear no shit. And she looking at it and she going to be looking at me like, nigga, what the fuck is that? Like, what life is you talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just a person like, I'd rather take, <laughs> I'd rather take the stairs than the elevator. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'd rather people love me for who I am than, you know, some fake ass version of myself. So I wouldn't consider myself a conscious rapper no more. Like, because that's putting you in a box. I just rap about my real life, real shit. And when you hear my records, I want you to be able to take something away from me. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Okay. So, favorite genre of music? That's a hard ass question. Like, uh, my favorite genre, obviously hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I love the first type of music I ever fell in love with was jazz. I was gonna say. I fell in love with jazz. It's cause so like jazz kind of taught me the the standards and the ways of how to ingest music, like being a historian of it, really studying people's styles and really appreciating what they do and not just listening to it just to make your head bob, like really trying to get into what the people are doing and what are they trying to say to you? So I started in jazz band when I was like sixth grade, you know, so jazz, it just, the shit just took me by, like, and it's cause it was something, you wouldn't think that a little boy from West Baltimore would like get engulfed with jazz, but my teachers, they like really made me fall in love with it. They found a way to like really, really, that's why I love teaching. So they just found a way to really, really make me fall in love with it. But I really enjoy all types of different music. Anything that sounds pleasurable. There's a lot of shit out there. You know, some people, they like uh, stuff that sounds crazy. I ain't really one of them people. I like things that sound good, sound pleasurable, whether it's relaxing or something that makes you want to go like dance or work out. I just like things that sound good. Okay. Each one, teach one. Jazz, hip hop. For sure, like uh, mostly black music, but I like uh, I like all types of different music. You know, I can appreciate rock and roll and country western. I mean, all that shit is black music. If you want to be honest, it's all it all comes technically from us. yes. Uh, any of music in America is black music. All all the things that you know, all the music that the world loves right now comes from black people. So you know, you gotta give me your top five. Top five hip hop. Like rappers? Uh, well now they kind of throw anybody into hip hop. Uh, I feel like Chris Brown is hip hop. I mean, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Okay, so, I'll give you my top five rappers. All right. Uh, it's not really a hard thing for me. Uh, uh, number one, this, I mean, I won't do no particular order, but honestly, number one is always going to be Nas for me. 
Nas is the type of rapper, like, I don't know. When I was like 11 or 12 years old, I just started listening to his. And honestly, I started listening to him because one of my sister boyfriends said that Nas was his favorite rapper. And you know, kids are very impressionable. That's why you gotta be careful what you say to mm -hmm. and around mm -hmm. your children because they're listening. So this dude said that Nas was his favorite rapper and I just started listening to Nas. And I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it was just something about it that resonated with me. It just made me feel like, I don't know, it didn't make me feel like a lot of other music that I listened to. So as I got older and I started growing and really, really understanding what he was saying, I'm like, yo, I was listening to this shit when I was 11, 12 years old. Like, and like he could have easily just rapped about anything, but he like tried to really inspire people. So Nas, uh, Jay-Z, you know, him and Jay-Z's beef kind of like made me start listening to Jay-Z because I felt like Jay-Z was kind of, I ain't gonna say he was whack, but you know, I just listened to the stuff he put on the radio. Average. You know what I'm saying? It didn't really inspire me. But then when I started really listening to his albums, I was like, oh, this dude is kind of deep as well. So Jay, um, I go more contemporary. There's a dude out now named Freddie Gibbs. I really like him. Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle, like, he just was, like, more than a rapper to me. He was somebody who, like, was just a real man. Like, he represented some stuff or something. Like, obviously, I ain't necessarily a fan of all the gangbanging activities and all that. But at the end of the day, I understand that that's his culture. Being from California, you know, I'm from Baltimore. We don't really bang bang like that out here. But at the same time, I, I, I like the things that he stood for and we talked about in his music. And you could see that he actually lived by the principles that he propounded to other people. So I definitely respect him. Round it out. Who would I say? Oh, man, that's, who would I give that last spot to? It's a tough one. It could be a group that doesn't have to. Okay, a group. No, because I'm just saying, like, for me, I would throw a group in there. Yeah, it yeah. would be like, okay, thank you. oh, you I, know what? I, I appreciate the inspiration. Group 36 Mafia. And like, you know what I'm saying? That's just on the street, ratchet. Like, they they should just sat when I heard they music, it just sounded like any unlike anything that I ever heard before. And it was like the same type of tip with Nas. Like at the time, you know, I didn't really know all the shit they were talking about. These niggas talking about snorting coke and doing all kind of crazy shit, but it just was hard. Like I just loved yeah. it. Like yeah. and then like it's just the way it made me feel. And as I grew up and I had experienced so many things, I'm like, oh shit, that's what they was talking about. Project Pat, Juicy J, like, you know, they they just I think that a lot of people don't really understand how much they influence the music that we listen to today. All these trap rappers and this drill all this stuff and, and yep. drill, all that shit is based on three six mafia from the hi hat patterns to just the dark sound of it, just people not being afraid to talk about taboo subjects on record. Like, you know, 3-6 kind of brought that to the game. So, like, yeah, that would be my top five, I guess. Um, it's interesting that you say Nas because, as we know, like, Nas' father was into jazz. Right. And you having a jazz background, yeah, you know. like, maybe that's what correlates to, like, that. that's what binds your love for Nas yeah. with yourself because maybe it was something in his music. I mean, yo. That, you know. I, I understand exactly what you mean. Like, I was talking to my wife about this. I like, it's crazy how like, when you like look at things, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, But like, when you start like putting all of the pieces together that you might not have saw going into it and kind of like, when you kind of look at it through the rear view, it's like, man, everything is so connected. Like, you know, like there's so many connections that we just don't always recognize. So you're probably right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like with his father being a trumpeter, uh, trumpet player, and you know, I didn't know that about his dad, but it was like something about him. I'm sure that that made him take the music more seriously because it wasn't just, he just rapping just for fun. Like Absolutely. your father's a musician. Like you understand the history, the depth of this and it's like you know being a black person in america you've got to find some way to tell your story like we done been through so much as people that we gotta we gotta put we gotta we gotta we gotta share this with each other we can't keep it to ourselves so the rap the jazz the books the podcast whatever you gotta do i believe that we all have to make our mark on this world because you don't want to leave and then have nothing be left like and if you don't have no books no podcasts no cds no albums no nothing 
you can leave the world and nobody know what your voice was. Like, put something out. If you got an idea, don't let nobody stop you from doing it because people will discourage you. But at the end of the day, like, uh, Jay-Z got a line. He said, I'm different. I can't base what I'm going to be off of what everybody is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you. And don't let nobody scare you or shake you from being yourself, man, because niggas will. You definitely answered my question before asking. No, it's it's good. I mm-hmm. mean, you just make the interview flow. So okay. to elaborate a little, what advice would you give someone looking to move into your industry, whether it's them inspiring to be a rapper or a producer or just an educational tip. All right. And this is like anything. Don't lie to yourself, man. You can't cheat the grind. Like, you can't, you can't, like, you can, it's great to dream, but working is more important or just as important as dreaming. Like, you got to come up with the ideas. You got to be not afraid to think big, but then you got to be willing to put the work behind it no matter what it is. So it's like, if you want to be a rapper, you want to be a producer, you want to be an educator, you want to be an instrumentalist, you want to make a podcast, you want to own a business, that's great. But then you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to be able to make that reality. You can't uh, depend on nobody else to uh, make your dream come true because it's your dream. Like, so if you have a dream, you got to be willing to invest in yourself. That might mean that you might not be able to go out with your friends every weekend, or you might not be able to go to Cancun every year or uh, buy new J's every month. Like you might have to put away a hundred dollars a month, like slow money, like big bank, take little bank. Like you got to start somewhere. Like don't be afraid to jump off the porch and you might have to fail a couple of times. Like it's okay, but it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get up. And I know a lot of the shit I'm saying sounds very cliche, but, but it's real. It's a hundred percent facts. Like, and the reason why you hear people say these things so many times is because anybody who's ever had any true success in life knows that it's true. You're gonna fail. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna like fuck up. But you gotta be willing to try, and you gotta be willing to accept that, learn from your mistakes, and do better. And that's like that's with anything. So that's not just about what I do. Like, I mean, every day I make mistakes, and you gotta be. Willing, you gotta love yourself enough to forgive yourself for making mistakes. Cause even when you make a mistake, you gotta be like, all right, well, what's how am I gonna correct this mistake? You can't just be like, all right, I made a mistake now, fuck it. Like, no, you made a mistake, then you try to do better. Like, if you wrong someone, be man or woman enough to apologize. Or if you like, you know what? Even if you try, if you, you burned a bridge, or you did some bullshit, or whatever the case may be, and you sit back and realize, like, you know what, that wasn't the right thing to do. Be man, be man or woman enough to be like, you know what, I'm sorry. Correct those wrongs. You know what I'm saying? But so many people, they can't do that. Like, they, I don't even say they can't do it. They just maybe, they don't have the courage to do it. They think that, oh, man, well, fuck it, like, whatever. Like, nah, yo, you can't do, uh, I heard somebody say something the other day. They was like, if you can uh, accomplish your dreams by yourself, then you're dreaming too small. And that's some of the realest shit I ever heard. Like, cause I'm a person who's always been like self-reliant. Like, well, me, 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 me. Cause you know, cause I know what I'm gonna do. I know I'm not gonna lie to myself. I know that at the end of the day, I'm not gonna bluff myself. But at the end of the day, you gotta be willing to work with other people. You gotta be willing to put yourself out there. You gotta be willing to at least try. Cause if you can do it by yourself, then you're not dreaming big enough. You know what I'm saying? And cause message. You know, that's a message, yo. Like, you, you know what you can do, but imagine what you could do if you compound that with somebody else, like two heads is better than one. I know I'm dropping a lot of cliches, but all this shit is real. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'm just 